Hello everyone and welcome back to the Global Business Update with TA. Seven stories from around the world to keep you updated in this first week of September. Well, the current Pakistan floods are being blamed on the massive impact of global warming. Every year, scientists are tracking the changes of the snow levels in the mountain caps of the Everest and specifically one of the glaciers, what we call as the Chota Shrigal Glacier, that has indicated a massive loss of ice and they believe that this too is contributing to the current floods that Pakistan is facing. So it looks like the problem of uh, climate change as we continuously speak about it is definitely uh, posing some uh, real uh, threats and it is creating havoc across the world because while Pakistan is facing floods, we see that a massive number of rivers, more than 60 rivers from 30 plus countries are actually facing one of the lowest levels of uh, water and even in Europe, uh, some of the rivers in Germany, uh, them going dry is actually causing supply chain headaches for executives across many different businesses. Factory closures, it seems like that it is here to stay. Many countries in the Asian continent, including Taiwan, China, they are experiencing closures of factories and as a global slowdown of the economic growth is having a heavy toll on China, the effects of that are actually spilling over to the other Asian destinations as well. And China has definitely uh, shown massive slowdown. And if you take uh, South Korea, well, they have shown a record trade deficit in the month of August. Mind you, this is one country that showed that export is the way to grow even during a pandemic time, but even they are feeling the heat. Supply chains seem to be facing a massive headwind this time as Cathay Pacific, one of the world's largest air freight companies, have indicated that COVID-related lockdowns, high inflation are simply going to be slowing down the demand for cargo around the world. And that could also mean that some of the massive profit margins and the high revenues that these companies were experiencing might be not so easy to achieve in the months ahead. Chinese and US rivalry in trade has been something that has been going on for quite a long time and of course aggravated by some of the statements during the Trump administration time. But seems like its actual result is now getting properly measured and monitored as we see the exports from China to US are going down by about 3% while the exports to Europe has grown by 11% and to Russia has grown by 26%. Looks like China is doing a good job too in finding new trade partners as the political and economic conflicts with the US are simply on the rise. How rich is Adani? This is a person who had around 60 to 70 billion dollars of wealth pre-pandemic and during the pandemic time where we saw the fortunes of so many other individuals tumbling, well his wealth has been doubled up and got close to the 130 to 140 billion dollar mark and while we always hear stories about rise and fall this seems to be one story about rise and rise and it's nothing short of remarkable to see a college dropout really going out there making the cut and making sure that his empire keeps growing he diversified quite well into different industries faced many challenges and obstacles and protests in so many different countries but he seems to be knowing in which industries to be putting his money into. And also, recently he was ranked among the third richest person in the world. Good on him. The world is talking about the EV boom, but what about the battery crunch? It looks like that, especially the US, as they are getting ready for a boom in electronic vehicles, where they only sold about 5 million EVs uh, last few years, out of the total world uh, sales of about 30 million. But as the EVs are said to be growing at about six times the current market levels, the real question is how are they going to fulfill the battery demand? And there too, China has an advantage. Around 80% of the battery production capacities of the world are with China. And how ready is the US to really conquer this uh, area? And, and mind you, even for China, with the current prices of lithium, uh, seem to be soaring to quite high levels. How economically profitable would EVs be? How much of that cost would the manufacturers be willing to pass on to the people is a big question. And some of the countries like Indonesia, we've discussed this before, uh, some of the countries like Indonesia are known for producing the 
required minerals for EV batteries, they too are putting a lot of restrictions regarding export of some of that material. So the real question is how soon and how fast will the world find alternatives for the soaring lithium is the big question. Uh, aluminium, salt and so many other different areas are being considered but the real question as I said before how fast can these alternatives be developed. Finally news from the UK they do have a new prime minister but they also do have a renewed focus towards modern sources of renewable energy and as they are targeting 